Hello. So now that we've actually um, uh, undistorted our camera, and now that we've actually um, uh, masked out any moving elements in our scene, okay, uh, we're now in a position to actually track our uh, 3D scene here. So what we're trying to do is we're what we're trying to do is actually track the whole scene in 3D. So we're not just tracking an object in 2D like we did with this tracker in the previous tutorial. What we're actually trying to do is track lots of points in this scene and actually reconstruct the movement of our camera that we use to shoot this scene as a virtual 3D camera, okay? So trying to actually, the best way to look at it is we're not just tracking, we're trying to reconstruct the scene in 3D, okay? Now, in order to do this, there's a two-step process. There's, uh, uh, there's uh, tracking points in our scene, and then there's uh, solving uh, our scene, okay? So, both have done it within the same node that we're looking at. So what we're going to do is we're going to call up the camera tracking node, okay? The camera tracker, is it, uh, the camera tracker node, okay? Now, keep in mind that the camera tracker node, okay, is it, it is called the camera tracker node because it's effectively it's not tracking the scene, it's not tracking stuff in the scene, it's using the scene to actually track the camera. OK, and that's an important thing to understand. Hopefully that will make more sense as we go to the end of the scene. I'm just going to move things up a little bit so we've got a bit more space. Right, OK. So first part of this is we need to have points that we can track. So I'm, I'm going to click on here so we've got, got our node invisible here that we can work on. Great. OK, now we have got a mask. So I want to select the fact that we have got a source alpha in here. OK, and then what we need to do is in order for it to track the camera, it needs to understand some information about our camera. So we need to specify the type of motion. In this case, it's a free camera. It's a handheld camera. and It's moving around. So I'm going to select free camera. It might be that I had it on a straight dolly or something, uh, in which case I might go for something like um, uh, linear motion or I might have had it on, say, um, uh, a pedestal, so it's moving on a flat floor, in which case I might go for something like planar motion. But for this one, or I might have had it on a, um, a tripod, in which case I'm just going to rotate. Uh, I, also want, I want to track rotation motion. In this case, what I'm doing is it's a free camera, so I'm saying it's, it's handheld, it's going to be moving around. Lens distortion. So what we want to do is say that there's no lens distortion on this, and there's no lens distortion because we've already undistorted this. OK, now, if we hadn't undistorted it and we didn't have that uh, grid, what I could do is just select unknown lenses. OK, uh, and that what that would do is it would use the 3D tracking points that it's tracking in this scene to also uh, work out um, uh, what the lens distortion would be. OK, great. Uh, but that's not nearly as good as actually just actually doing a distortion grid uh, with this method. Uh, well, no, I wouldn't say not nearly, but it's not as uh, effective or robust as, as the method that we've used. OK, so now what we want to do is uh, we want to specify the focal length. So we do know what the focal length was, and the focal length was 34 millimetres. Now, what I should just say about this part here, so the, I'm look, talking about here the focal length and the film back size. Both of these elements together contribute what we call the field of view. Okay. Uh, now I'm sure you've done this in another module, but if you make if we make the sensor smaller, it increases. It makes the field of view wider for the same focal length. Okay. In fact, sorry. Let me rephrase that. If we make the film back size smaller, it makes the uh, it, it makes the field of view narrower for the same focal length. So, for example, this is effectively equivalent to the 35 millimeter film uh, film camera, okay? Or in a digital world, say a um, Canon um, 5D, which is a 35 mil sensor, or any digital camera that's got a 35 mil sensor on there. If I um, basically, if I uh, decrease this, this will basically be as if by making this smaller it would be as if I was making the focal length longer. It's narrowing the field of view, okay? 
the important part is that both of these elements define our field of view and what we need to do is we need to know what the field of view of the camera is in order to be able to accurately solve the camera. So the computer is not going to be able to understand and solve the movement of the camera if it doesn't know what the field of view of the camera is. Okay, so the key part from your point of view is that you need to know both of these pieces of information. Okay, so you need to know what the focal length of the lens you're using is and you need to know, so avoid zoom lenses if you can and avoid things like um, telescopic tubes and things like that. Things that change the focal length to something that, 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 that we don't know what it is. Okay, um, okay. next we've got the... Um, uh, the uh, the film back okay so another thing you want to know so just as, as we want to know what the film the length the length of the, the lens we're using is we want to know what the size of the film back is okay so in this case we're using a black magic camera and what's great about this is you've got things called something called film back presets so I could go to the black magic website get the measurements in, I could get the measurements of my sensor and put them into here and you could put them in in millimeters or inches depending on what what size they've given you the size of the sensor so just to clarify the film back is effectively the size of the sensor okay so different cameras have different size image sensors what's really useful here is I've used the Blackmagic cinema camera and I can actually there's there's for known cameras or, or common cameras, I suppose. Uh, Nuke have already put in here uh, the um, uh, those sizes, so you can just select from here. So I can go right. I've got a Black Magic, so you might go Canon. You've got the C100, C300, which we've got, uh, and then you might go to digital SLRs, and these are all the different digital SLRs. So you've got all kinds of sort of a whole range of cameras that you can already select from. I've used a Black Magic, and it was the Cinema Camera C2. OK, and they've also got the pocket camera that we've got as well. So I can click on that. OK, and that's great. And it gives me the film back size automatically. Brilliant. So in short, both of those pieces of data means that I can now accurately reproduce the field of view of the camera. OK, excellent. Um, now, what we can also do is I can. Uh, uh, now, what we can do is we can sort of look at some of the settings here to look at uh, sort of features that we're tracking okay so what we can do is I can I can I can actually increase the number of features that I'm tracking here so I might go let's go up to say to 200 okay so this is the number of features it's going to try and track in this scene okay um, now I'm quite happy with the threshold detection and feature separation uh, settings in here. In fact, actually, I might increase the threshold detection a little bit. Okay, all we're doing here is saying that we want we're, we're defining, we're telling the computer to only track uh, points. Remember, we want to track high contrast points. We're telling the computer to track only high contrast points here. Feature separation is how evenly do I want it to track features across our scene, okay? So now what we're going to do, in fact, what I, what I can do is turn on the uh, preview features uh, section. So this is telling me what features it's planning to track here. Uh, and you can tell if I change uh, if I change the detection threshold, you can see it's adding extra features to areas which don't have so much contrast. OK, so I want to kind of drop that down a little bit. OK, and then uh, here I can tell it how many features I want to track. So I could I could drop this to say 50 and you'll see it's going to track less, a smaller number of features here. So you can see these are the features it's actually tracking. OK, and then the separation, if I turn that down, it will it will basically track features all in one area by increasing that number okay I'm telling it I want to track features more evenly across the screen okay now that I've done that I'm kind of ready to do my track so I can go back to the camera tracker tab and then basically click click track okay uh, I'm just going to wind it back to frame one okay and I'm just going to go and click track okay so now what it's going to do is going to go through our scene and track all of these points. Now that'll take a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause it there. And we're still in the middle of the track here, but I just wanted to point out that you'll notice that it tracks forward 
and backwards as well. And also, one of the things I didn't point out is that you can see that this alpha mask is working. Notice it's not tracking any points in this area where we've actually placed the mask. Okay, I'm going to pause it again for it to finish. Okay, so now that our track's completed, what I want to do is just go through this. I'm just going to just zoom in here. In fact, if I play this back, you can see that that it's taken all those points and it's tracking the movement, you know, it's tracking all those points on the screen. Now it hasn't solved the it hasn't actually worked out the position of the camera yet. All it's done is just track these points on our screen, okay? Right, I'm just going to stop it there rather than play it all the way back. But you just, I just wanted to demonstrate that it is tracking those points. Okay. Now, if I just uh, move this down, what we can then do is start looking here and looking at any track points that don't seem to be following, you know, the same sort of uh, path as the other track points. Okay. So any track points that kind of cause a bit of concern. So, for example, this one here. Uh, I don't like. So if you select it, you can just simply delete that track point. Okay, uh, this one here. Uh, I think. I think I'm happy with most of these track points. So look. Most of these trap points are fine. So I'm just going through, just, just seeing if there's anything that, that I don't want. I, I think that'll do as a first pass, but obviously you could go through this in more detail. But all we're trying to do is look at trap points that don't seem to be following the same path as the um, uh, as the other trap points. Okay. Um, so for example, I think, yeah, this one doesn't quite fit for me. That's right. Let's have a look. No, no, that seems to be fine. Yeah. Okay. So I've gone through there and, and had a look at that. Now what we can do is is what we want to do is take those 2D track points, okay, and the information that we know about this lens that we've put into this system, and then use that to actually work out the movement of the camera itself, okay? And we do that by clicking solve. So this is the solve process now, okay? So if I click on that, OK, so what it's done then is it's actually it's taken all these trap points and solved the movement of the camera for me. OK, um, now what we're looking at here is, uh, in fact, and, and what I should just demonstrate, if I go into 3D scene now in that solve, what it's done, OK, is it's is it's worked out. It hasn't created a camera yet, but it's worked out where all those points are in 3D space. OK. Great. And it's difficult at the moment, but you could actually go and check those 3D points and say, see if you're actually happy with those 3D points and, and whether those sort of correlate with what, you're, with what you should be seeing. OK, but before we do that, let's go back to our 2D view. What we're interested in here is we've got this error rate here. And this is what, what this is doing. It's sort of looking at it and kind of go, you know, all these points give us different information. And it's sort of saying, you know, how close, you know, how, how close were these points to being correct, to giving us an accurate track okay how how close do these points actually line up and corroborate, corroborate each with each other uh, as as it did the track okay so what we can do is um again, i'm just going to just go back to frame 1 and click solve again okay uh yep reset the current solve Great. Okay, it seems to be solving very quickly for some reason. But anyway, um, okay. So we've we've now done that. Um, uh, so now what we want to do is go into um, uh, auto tracks. Okay. So effectively, what we want to do now is to improve this error rate. So we want to we want to try and get this below one. OK, so to improve this error rate, what we want to do is some of these tracks are going to be better than others. So we want to analyze all these tracking points now. OK, and actually strip out tracking points that aren't so good. OK, and then resolve based on the good tracking points. OK, so again, I'm just going to click. Uh, uh, I'm just going to click um, 
auto or the auto tracks tab first thing we're going to do, do is, is pick out any tracks which are only tracked for a very short period of time so you can see by the length of these lines there's some that are only on the screen for a short period of time and they're probably not going to give us as good a track as some of the other uh, some of the other tracks or some of the other uh, track points so we can click um, we can click track length min okay and then min length so that's what I want to do. I'm just going to press control to select both of those. OK, um, and then what I can do is I can adjust this top slider here to remove any track marks which are, you know, uh, above or, or below a certain period of time. So I, I'm, I'm definitely going to try and get rid of anything that's below, you know, only four frames. OK, there's quite a large number that are only five frames, but I'm going to leave those for the moment. OK, so. I'm going to say that's the minimum track length, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how accurately it can actually, how accurately it is able to track each of these track markers in 2D space, okay? And I'm going to do that by selecting uh, the error RMS, okay? And the max track error option here. So look, okay? Uh, okay, uh, and then what I can do just to get a better look on this is I can uh, I can frame this. What I'm going to do is just adjust. So if I just adjust this, so it's this second line down. It's this second uh, slider here that I want to adjust. If I just pull this down here for the moment, okay. And if I if I click on this graph and just press F, it will frame everything up so I can see it a little bit more clearly. So now I can see more clearly what I'm adjusting here. And I really want to get rid of a lot of these initial track points here. And I've got a really good cluster of, of track points that the computer feels quite confident about. So I'm going to keep those, okay. So that's getting rid of any track points which the computer is unsure about how accurately it was able to track that detail in uh, 2D space okay so this tracking in the details within the within the actual video next thing I want to do is I want to click um, I, I want to what I want to do is pick track points which when it came to actually putting them into the 3D solve didn't corroborate didn't didn't corroborate or didn't uh, fit the solution of the other tracks okay so as I'm actually using this information to solve the camera in 3d some tracking points fit the solution of our of, of the position of our camera better than others okay so we're assuming that those that don't fit it again are not tracking properly so I want to click error track okay uh, in fact I want to click error max and then I want to click uh, max error okay Again, I can press F to frame this, and it's this bottom slider now that I want to adjust. So again, I'm just going to get rid of all of these at the top here. Again, you don't want to get rid of too many um, uh, track points. You want to be careful of doing that, okay? So I'm going to go with that. Now what I can do is go delete unsolved, okay? And this will permanently delete these track markers and delete rejected. OK, so it's deleted all those track markers. Now what I want to do is go back to the camera tracker and then click solve again. And you'll see that we're now down to an error rate of 1.16 per frame. OK, um, OK. Um, what I would do as well, sorry, just another thing to wind back on as well. When I went into settings here, uh, in fact, yes, uh, no, that's fine. Um, I thought I'd left preview features on, but I, I hadn't, so that's fine. Okay, let's go back to our auto tracks. So so we want to get this to to one, ideally, okay, or one or less, okay. Um, so again, I'm going to go back to my auto tracks. I'm going to I'm going to look I'm going to look at this length thing again, okay. So I'm going to click. Um, I think it was the length uh, uh, min and uh, min length, okay. Press F to frame that, and I'm tempted to kind of adjust this and get rid of this sort of bulk of tracking markers here. And then what I'm going to do is go back to look at my other ones. So that's my RMS. This is the 2D checking my 2D tracks. Okay. And I think there's some more I could strip out there. Let's move these out here. You see, there's quite a good bulk there that are good. Might even be a bit more aggressive than that. Ooh. So I just moved the wrong slider there. That's something to be careful of. 
Okay, let's stick to that. And then I'm going to do my error max and my max error. Again, press that F to frame it. And then I'm just going to be a bit more aggressive with that. Okay. Again, I'm going to go delete unsolved. Yes. Delete rejected. Yes. And then I'm going to go back to my camera tracker. And you can see now we're less than one. And if I click solve, okay, yes. So now we're less, less than one. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm happy with that as a solve. That seems to that's convincing me that that's that's now that we've now got a good track on there. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually um, if I just go back to our node graph here. Okay, now what we can do is we can go back to our um, scene. Uh, what, what we can go back to our node graph, and what we want to do is obviously we want to take all this data and and, and be able to use this to actually, um, uh, you know, uh, place 3D objects into our scene. And there's various options you can select, but I'm going to select the scene plus option and go create. And what you'll see is, it's basically created all these nodes. So all these nodes below have been created automatically by this camera tracker. And basically what this is doing is it's creating a 3D scene. Okay. Um, let me just demonstrate this for you. I'm going to go into 3D here. It's creating a 3D scene. Uh, what I need to do is connect uh, this, this scan line renderer to the viewer. Okay, here we go. And I press five. So I'm looking at the, the so now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the 3D scene that's been created by this tracker. So you can see we've got a 3D scene. Here's our camera, okay. Here's our point clouds. So here are all the points in our scene, okay. We can see all of those that it's tracking. That's great. You want to check the sort of errant points that are behind the camera or, 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 or where you wouldn't expect them to see be, okay? But you can see it's created a 3D scene with our camera. Okay, that's the camera there, our point cloud, okay? And it's putting those into a scene. So this this is our scene. So it's, that's the, 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 the point clouds going into the scene, the camera going into the scene. And then and then here is our renderer. So the scene which is the ca uh, the scene is then fed into our renderer, okay? Um, yeah, uh, and that and and then and then it's the it's the renderer that we're looking at in order to be able to kind of look at our scene and see what we like, see what we can see. Now to move between the three D view that I'm doing here, and again this the, you can move around this three D view exactly the same way as you might move around Maya. So that's kind of a, a sort of a standard that sort of interface in terms of pressing Alt and using the right, middle, and left mouse button to move around. Okay. You can swap between the 2D and 3D scenes here, so you can see those, okay? And uh, what we can do is, now that we're looking through the scanline renderer, you can see those 2D points and get an idea of, these are 3D points in our scene rendered through the camera. So these aren't 2D track points now, these are 3D points in our scene that have been, that are, that are, that are being rendered and then added to our scene, okay? So notice that this scanline render allows us to put a background on there and notice that here it's taking a copy of the movie and putting it through the lens distortion. Okay. So effectively effectively what we could do is is there is no lens distortion on this, but what we could do is if if it was an unknown lens, any distortion data that it, it had that this tracker had uh, created or figured out from its track would be put into this lens distortion node. So we could copy and use that lens distortion node in the same way that we're doing with this lens distortion node. But as it is, we selected no distortion. So this won't have anything on it, hopefully. Uh, we click on that, yeah. No distortion. So this has got no data on this lens distortion. It's effectively not doing anything, okay? But if we said unknown lens, that would have some data on it, okay? Uh, or we set unknown lens in our camera tracker, that would have had some data in it. Okay, great. Now that we've done that, what we want to do is, you'll notice when we're in our 3D scene, basically the camera is kind of, uh, uh, you'll notice that the camera is also moving around. Notice how the camera is moving forward. So this is reproducing the movement of the camera, okay, that, that, that was used to shoot the scene. Okay, around the static 3D points. And that's what's giving us this motion here. If we play that back, there we go.
Okay, so you play that back and check check the track. Let me just let it preview up to this point here, and you can see that's a pretty solid track. They're, they aren't slipping around; they're doing quite well. So that's our sort of first initial check, if you like, as are these points uh, on on the scene. Now, if we go to this three D scene, you'll see that the tr camera is basically level. So if we go to to frame one, it treats that as that's where the camera. Is is you know it's sort of treating the camera as level, and then basically positioning these uh, point clouds um, in respect to the camera. In effect, basically the scene we've got we've got an accurate three D scene, but it doesn't know anything about the actual layout of that scene. It doesn't know what orientation this camera should be. It doesn't know that that really this is you know most of these. Uh, are on the floor, and most of these trap points should really be on the ground. Um, and then, uh, and, and and so so these trap points should be kind of flat rather than sort of going upwards like this, because it doesn't know the layout of the scene. So that the next thing we want to do is kind of try and give it some information about the layout of the scene. So what we want to do is is basically to give some idea, a simple way of giving some idea of where this should be in uh, the, the, the the orientation of this scene. So when we think about what we want to do is tell, try and, what we want to do is try and give information about the orientation of the scene and the scale of the scene. Okay, now in this demonstration, knowing what the scale of the scene is, is isn't so important, but we do need to give it the orientation of the scene. So how we do that is we'll go back to the camera tracker. So I'm going to select the camera tracker, press 2, so that we're now looking at the camera tracker, not the rendered result okay and then if you just move this bar you should get these uh tracking lines uh, again and then what you want to do is get to a point where you've got quite a few tracking lines on the floor that we can select from so here we are i'm going to go and press shift and just select a load of these tracking positions that are on the floor okay And the key thing is to select tracking points that are at different distances, okay? Because uh, it will give that that will make it more accurate at that point. Then I'm going to kind of go through the scene a little bit, okay? And there's a good number there that are, that, are, that kind of exists for a long period of time. But let's select that, select that, and there's some more tracking markers I can select. So just I don't need to track everything. But I'm just sort of going through the scene, making sure that every point in this. Oh, sorry. I forgot to press shift there, so I'm going to have to start again. I do apologize. Let's uh, try and be careful next time. Again, select these, select these, select that one. Okay. Don't want that one. Let's select that one. Okay. Let's move through. Even more that I can select there. That's great. I think that's enough markers that I've selected. So now that I've selected these tracking markers, what I can do is just go right click and go. Um, uh, ground plane set to selected okay but you'll see there's other things I could do I could I could um, uh, you know I, I could um, uh, uh, well actually no this is the best way to do it so if I go ground plane let's go set to selected okay and now what we've done is basically say all these tracking markers we've just selected they're on the ground so now when we look at our 3d scene Okay, you'll see. Okay, I'm just going to look through the camera again. So I'm going to select my scan line renderer, and this is our 3DC, so we can see the camera. So you'll see that it's put all those points on the ground. Look, okay, and uh, yeah, it's put all those points on the ground, and it's put our camera tilting downwards. So now we've got a scene that is acting like or is, is laid out at least in some way in terms of its orientation, maybe not the scale is laid out in some way that is similar to how the actual scene that we shot was laid out in real life. And we can also check the track 
by selecting a um by if I put in here a wipe what I can actually do is I can I can actually check between my I can kind of see my 3D world and my but if I select here I can put a wipe in here in fact let's do 3D and what I'm going to do is if I select 3D and then say that I'm looking through camera 1 okay what I can then do and I'm going to do an over okay I can create a wipe here that can give me an idea of a sense of you know I can actually see the ground here I can get a sense of the ground moving I can get a sense of these points so I'm getting a much better idea with this of how my scenes laid out and the sort of solve that I'm getting okay let's just play this let's just preview this so it's just doing a quick preview for me now okay so again all I did was just select the uh, uh, over I selected wipe then over okay and then all I've done is um, in fact let's just pause this at the moment my my B which is this bit here is my read to node and I don't really want that what I want it to be is my uh, I would like that to be my undistorted one if I can uh, scan line render all one ah shuffle copy one okay I want it to be shuffle copy one okay because then that's the undistorted version let's try that okay so what I'm doing is I'm actually I've got the result of my scan line renderer okay looking through which is in 3d looking through the camera okay overlaid with what's coming out of the shuffle copy ie the original video okay that's undistorted uh, and went into the tracker okay and then what I can do is I, I, by by previewing this um, I can actually get an idea of how this is all fitting together and obviously what I'm interested in is the fact that that this is supposed to be our ground plane so I'm really looking at not not just these tracking points now but this grid how does this grid line up with with being the floor okay so I'll just let this preview generate and then I'll uh, come back to you okay so I'm I'm really happy with the results of this so what we've got is you know we can see that the, the, the clouds that the, the points in 3d are tracking really nicely with the scene but also we can see that this ground plane okay is really you know it is really sort of hooked to the floor okay we can really see that it matches where the floor should be so I'm happy with that track okay